Hello, my name's Jo Ryan, a subject specialist from BPP, and I'm here today to give you some guidance on how to deal with variances in your F5 examination. The syllabus areas that we'll be focusing on are D2, 3, 4 and 5. To give you an overview then, we'll be looking at the style of the questions and how best to approach them during your exam. The F5 exam builds on knowledge then that you'll have gained from your FMA examination. But what we have to realise then is what the examiner is looking for here is very different in terms of style and technique. The time of rote learning has passed and we're looking here for some application towards how the business is performing, thinking about the fact that we're appraising the company's performance and thinking about how it's been managed. The additional syllabus areas that you'll need to be aware of for variances are to do with material mix and yield variances, thinking about sales mix and quantity variances, also thinking about breaking it down into planning and operational variances, as well as being asked to prepare full operating statements under either marginal costing or absorption costing. So previously then you may be used to just calculating one variance for two marks. Here you could be asked to pull together the whole operating statement and you'll need to have remembered the pro forma and think about the approach and the layout as well as the content of your answer. Something else which is very critical at F5 is the interdependence of variances. So thinking about discursive elements as well as actually being able to perform the calculations. Undertaking a review then of five exams that were sat from June 2009 to June 2011, all five of those contained a 20 mark question on variances. So it's an absolutely critical topic area for students about to embark on this paper. You need to be prepared for discursive elements as well as the calculations. In these papers then 25% to 40% of the marks awarded were for discussion so it's not enough to just be prepared for the calculations and I cannot emphasise enough how important it is to practice the discussion parts of questions as part of your revision phase as well as those calculations. So we need to be prepared to think about why um, things are important, we need to be able to discuss the performance, we need to be able to look at the standards that are being used and possibly to critique what exists in the scenario. So if we're thinking then about how the business has performed in our performance management paper and we can use variances to help us, we might want to think about using um, a real question. So I'm going to talk you through crumbly cakes, a question which occurred in the June 2009 examination. The examiner here has said that the calculations were well undertaken but students struggled with part A. Here then we've got the information from the scenario and I've highlighted out some of the key points which I'm going to talk you through now and think about the processes that should have been going through your mind as you were preparing for this question. This is something that could have been undertaken during the reading time of the exam so you could have got your thoughts well organised before the exam actually started to give you a head start over some of the other students. So first of all then I like to know what it is that the company is about so that I can get the idea and get in the mindset of the company straight away. So Crumbly Cakes then here are making cakes sold direct to the public. We're told then that the production manager is looking at using organic ingredients in the cake production and um, we're not expected to know they're more expensive, we're given that information and we're told then that these organic ingredients lead to improved flavour and health benefits to the customer. All of this is the background information and it's important to bear this in mind as we're reading through the rest of the scenario. So here then, and this is very important, it's a responsibility based standard costing system and the managers only get a bonus when favourable net variances are allocated to them. We're given information then about the fact that this change starts in March in production but we don't make any changes to the standard costs. So the variances then which have been calculated for us are based on the old costs which include the non-organic ingredients. We're given the information then um, and the actual variances. I've put a ye yellow box around those because I wouldn't actually get too bogged down in the detail of these until I was ready to start writing my answer. 
obviously I'm reading this out loud and I've slowed it down, but during the exam you need to be reading and digesting the information quickly. The production manager then is upset that he's lost all hope of a, bis of a bonus under the system and yet the sales manager thinks that it's excellent and we're also told they have no inventory. So if we have a look then at the detailed requirement, we're being asked to assess the performance of the production manager and the sales manager and indicate whether the current bonus scheme is fair to those concerned. So what we've got here then is two things that we need to do. Assess the performance of both the production manager and the sales manager, but we also need to make some kind of comment on whether the bonus system is fair. And I think it's a good idea to get it very clear in our heads before we start writing what it is that we want to do. What we need to think about then when we're actually answering this question then in terms of ideas is that we've got seven marks available here. So um, and it's an indication we need to be coming up with about seven well-explained points. We need to recognise then that the move towards organic ingredients is a fundamental change in the business and the nature of the company. Before then, and it's important to look at the before as well as the after, the production manager had, albeit very small, but favourable bonus, favourable variances and so therefore would have been getting a bonus. The move then towards the organic ingredients was his idea and yet it's going to leave him with overall adverse variances. Material price then is adverse because as we're told the organic ingredients are more expensive. Um, the mix then is also adverse and although we've got a very slightly favourable yield so we're getting a little bit more out of the process, uh, it's not enough to compensate for those very high additional costs for the organic ingredients. So the organic um, food then is leading to adverse variances for the production manager. However, if we think about the business as a whole, sales have gone up as represented by the very favourable variances that the sales manager is um, experiencing. So in February there were adverse sales variances for him and no bonus, whereas in March these variances are favourable in terms of the number sold and also the price of those. What we see then is that the sales manager has been involved in actually pushing these organic things and so will have had to be involved in the selling process and so can take some of the claim for responsibility but it was the production manager's idea and therefore he should uh, take some of the credit too. What we see here then is that the company needs to change some of the standards and also needs to think about changing the bonus system to make it fairer. Having looked at that question then, we can see that the discussion elements are really important and need to be properly planned before we start writing so that you're clear in your head of what the structure of your answer is going to be and also the content of it. I've pulled some of the key points out to remember here and something that the examiner is very keen on is that adverse variances are not always bad and conversely, favourable variances aren't always good news. So in the overall case of crumbly cakes, the choosing to use the organic ingredients was a good idea. However, it led to an adverse material price variance, which we might initially think is bad news, but when we looked at it in the overall context, we saw that for the company overall, it was the right decision in terms of sales volumes and sales revenues. That brings me on to my next point then, variances shouldn't be viewed in isolation. We need to think about um, all of the variances and what the overall picture is that they show. In addition to that, you might need to look at trends over time in different questions and you might also need to be thinking about when it would be appropriate to investigate and when it wouldn't be. The other thing to remember then is that performance management systems are not perfect. So just because a company has a system in place doesn't necessarily mean that it is the best way to appraise their staff and to allocate rewards. So thinking about motivation and thinking about the importance that it has on behavioural implications for employees is also very important. Also, you need to think about the appropriateness of the standards used. In the case of the last question, using the standards for non-organic ingredients when we're making organic cakes 
clearly made the, the appraisal system much less useful because we're not using uh, like with like to make our comparisons. So how should we approach our questions then? Well, we've seen that we need to establish the context and get the ideas buzzing around in our head about what the company does. And we also need to underline our key verbs and key requirements to make sure that we're clear what requirements there are within a sub requirement. We also need to allocate our time, not just to the individual questions, but to the sub parts of the questions. We can use then 1.8 minutes per mark as a guide for how long we need to spend thinking about it and planning it as well as writing it, but also as a guide for the volume of work required. If something is going to take you 30 minutes, the examiner is not going to give you two marks for it. So if you're approaching a two mark requirement and it's spend, spending ages on it, then you need to be moving on and you've perhaps got the wrong idea. Also, decide on the order. Play to your strengths first. You don't have to do part A first. You can do part B. When you review crumbly cakes, which I suggest you do, you'll see that part B then was asking you to calculate some variances and you may have felt more comfortable doing the calculations first. And as long as you make sure that you leave yourself sufficient time to approach part A afterwards, then you could have done it in that way. Also, make sure that your answer refers back to the scenario. So in this case, thinking about cakes, thinking about using words like eating. Um, if we're looking at a hospital, for example, we wouldn't talk about customers, we would talk about patients. Just little things that you can put into your answer to give them um, style and to impress the marker. What we should ask ourselves then is if I was in the manager's shoes, would these comments make sense to me? So do they relate back to the scenario enough? It's not sufficient to just wrote learn things from a textbook at this level. You need to be making sure that you apply them. The next thing I want to think about is why you're calculating these variances. What's the purpose of them? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And I'm going to use a question from June 2010's exam to help with this sticky wicket. So here then we've got part B and this time we're going to look at how to approach the calculation side of the question. So I've underlined the requirement here, calculate the material, labour and sales variances for May 2000 and X0 in as much detail as the information allows. Phrases like as much detail as the information allows throw people because they don't like not being told what it exactly is that the examiner wants. So how could you have known what to do? Well in this case you could think about the type of company, this company makes cricket bats, and you could think about what it is that you want a material variance for. Well, you want to know whether you paid more for your materials or whether you use them efficiently. So thinking about what it is that they're showing would also help. Another tip then which would have helped in this question is by using the rest of the question 